Hello and welcome to Pridecast, the exclusive podcast for the first ever Pool Pride at Lighthouse on Saturday the 8th of June. I'm Nick Churchill and with me we're very glad to be joined by CBB star and very dear friend of Lighthouse, the one and only Chris Jarvis. Thank you. Chris is going to be at Lighthouse for Pool Pride hosting Pride Outdoors, an afternoon of family friendly fun and frolics in the outdoor theatre space to the side of Lighthouse. If you're not already familiar with it, Lighthouse Pool is one of the UK's biggest art centres outside London. It's an Arts Council national portfolio organisation and a registered charity. We're just across the road from Lighthouse today in the Dolphin Centre, using the Foundry Studios as part of our Pool Pride community partnerships. Thanks for joining Pridecast, Chris. Great to see you, Nick. Lovely to see you as well, as always. Tell us a bit about Pride Outdoors. So what are we what are we going to see? Well, this is a brand new show, so I can't wait to see it either. Um, I think that it's going to be, I hope very much it's mm. going to be, a celebration of everyone in the area who wants to take part, um, a real reflection of the talent that we've got. So we have some pros performing, but we, we're we also going to be uh, looking at some of the new talent that's emerging in the area through various drama schools and dance schools. Oh, nice. um, so uh, there'll be a lot of familiar faces too um and of course we have the dog show as well which we've also well the to. dog shows cause it's no no small <laughs> amount of excitement <laughs> you can imagine yeah for me it's exciting because i love dogs i i can't have one because right. um well, you know, I'm just always working and not always in places where I could take the dog yeah. along. But uh, my brother has one and um, my granny had one and we owe that dog everything, <laughs> you know, because it looked after my granny in her later years. Uh, but um, so this will be a chance for everyone to enjoy everybody's dogs. And, right, absolutely. Uh, see some quirky pooches too. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, there'll be sort of a, a good array of rainbow leads. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So the, the, the in terms of the, the 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 talent show that we're going to be seeing, singing, dancing, comedy. Yeah, and um, yeah, as well as the local um, mm. talent that will be there. You know, we, we've got some guest performers coming along, but we're going to start the afternoon one o'clock with uh, a more CBB. So it's going to get older and older as it goes on. Right. But really, you know, it's for everybody, and you know, yeah. we're all big kids at heart. So um, we've got a big sing along starting at one o'clock. Wow. And uh, we hope uh, as many people will come along, as many families will come along. Young families are so welcome to come along and see and join in. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. And as it goes on, we have a bit of magic, um, a lot of singing and dancing. And it'll be very cool. People can come along. The space is great. Um, we were just chatting. Where we? I had no idea that this area, just to the side of Lighthouse, was always intended to be used. Absolutely. As a yeah, it was uh, when... when Lighthouse was the plan. The plans for Lighthouse were drawn up at the end of the 60s and into the early 70s before it was built. And this idea of an outdoor performance space was one of the original ideas. And it was landscape created and laid out and and remained dormant or hiding in plain sight for for nearly 40 years. Well, and it makes so much sense because when it was um, put up two years ago, when the stage was erected and um, the sound system went in, and I mean, it looked so good, it, so inviting. Yes. And um, now, you know, uh, with our weather getting warmer, apparently, um, over the winter, and people love being outside. That's yeah. one of the only few good things that came out of lockdown was that but actually we do enjoy being outside. This we love the continental style. There's something about um, being entertained in the outdoors as well, isn't there? It's oh a, yeah, it's a yeah. it's a different. You get a different sense, although you're you're all together enjoying it. There's no well, there's no roof over your head for one thing, but yes, and and yeah. I don't know. But as a performer, is it, is it? There's nothing to contain your 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 projection or your voice either. That's right. So. I, I think it's win-win everywhere. For the yeah. performers, you know, it's great having, you know, the fresh being in the fresh air. There's something very different about it. Performers normally love being in different spaces all the time. And for the audience, it's great because if you don't like it, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an easy The doors out. aren't locked. <laughs> <laughs> no one notices. That's so. right. Yeah, yeah. But no, there's, some, there's something really fabulous about festivals and, um, you know, when you go and see um, outdoor theatre um, and, and like the Globe which mm. is effectively out there it's got no roof no, that's um, <laughs> there's something really magical about being under the stars and mm. and uh, watching live entertainment The uh, so there would be an opportunity for lots of opportunity for people to join in would there be an opportunity for for perhaps amateurs 
singers to showcase their talents as well? Yes, so um, we are on the lookout. I mean, that's being handled by Lighthouse because mm. this is a Lighthouse production, which is brilliant, you know, so it's not just the Pantos now that <laughs> yeah. um, Paul Lighthouse is uh, involved with putting on and staging this from start to from conception right through to delivery of the show. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're inviting people to take part. And you're you're looking maybe you might find some unearth some new talent there perhaps. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. In fact, you know, I know some of the uh, performers that are coming, and you know, they're uh, they're amazing. I have to say, you know, I've because I've been uh, involved in pantomimes and television and variety shows because um, this is a bit of a variety show that mm. we're putting on, albeit outside. Um, the standard seems to just go up and up and up, and I, I, I don't know what, why that is. You know, because we're all humans, and you'd imagine it would just be level. You know, there'd be some good performers and bad performers at all all stages. But um, no, you know, it just it's um, I don't know what they're teaching in drama schools and at school. There's something brilliant. that it, it seems to be as well it's 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 not alternative variety it's old-fashioned family-friendly song and dance yeah and i think people are flocking back to theaters and festivals and cruise ships and wherever there's live entertainment because it's maybe something they're not necessarily getting on the tv anymore um i grew up watching a lot of variety shows i mean you had more and wise and t- uh, the two ronnies but uh, you know a lot more variety we still have it in things like um britain's got talent mm-hmm. and but um it, and, and saturday night takeaway but really um it's become quite niche telly in a good way you you know, I mean, I, th- I think telly's great. There's always something to watch. Mm. But that sort of family entertainment, entertainment that you can enjoy together as a family, you know, is is not necessarily there. And, and that would help to explain why the figures are going up every year for pantomimes yes. and for things like this. And I think Paul Pride outside is going to be very much something that the whole family can enjoy it's a, it's a celebration of everybody. That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, a, an, an event such as Pride, which which people might assume is for a section of the community is actually for a much broader appeal isn't it so i think so i think the definition of it has changed over the years it's um you know as battles have been won politically and um you know in terms of people's acceptance and 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 what have you but it's become more about reflecting the whole community mm. really and the fact that we are all different or we've got different things to offer and uh, no more so is that so so uh, true than with entertainment you know when you look at very different performers you know i mean i work with CBBS all yeah. the time, and you know when you look at the cast of CBBS from Mr. Tumble to um, people like Reese Stevenson and Cat Sandy and Andy Day, they're all so different. And I think that's what's been so good about over the years what what's gone on with CBBS. We have you know it's, it's almost like the Carry On cast. You know, <laughs> the, it, it, it's it's great to have to be able to reflect. Um, the whole c- community on mm. stage as well as in, in the audience, hopefully. But yes, it, it's nice to think of CBBS as sort of chipping away at the diversity thing for years and years and years, really, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and it, and it works, and people and people love it. You know, yes. it's the, yeah. the number one children's channel, and um, you know, it, it's always been very truthful. I mean, one of the most popular shows on CBBS is Something Special, which was intended originally to be a program for. SEN children and um, and yet it was just loved by everybody absolutely everyone and it's one of the highest rating shows and it's it's another great show rather yeah. than a different show for a very specific audience it doesn't it have isn't. to be niche it can no. be mainstream too so, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think pride has become mm. that you know it's it's for everybody and I think um, people in a good way have forgotten what perhaps it was mm-hmm. originally, yes. perhaps, you know, because it means something different now to everybody. Well, it's the whole, I guess that's the whole point really of, of, of pool pride specifically. I and mean, pool's taken a long, long time to get a pride together. Um, yeah. And now rather than being a thing of protest, it's a thing of celebration. It's a holding a big mirror up to our entire community. So, yeah, uh, which I, I love. I think yeah, it's absolutely. a great thing to do. And you've, I mean, you've been involved quite in the past with born free and and again with the sort of family afternoon entertainment is that something that was always quite dear to you or yeah well they asked me mm. a few years ago to get involved and i wasn't quite sure um how to go about putting on the show but they just said look just put on a show for families 
we, and that what was a, it. What a thrill! Just so a, well, yeah, so I mean, it, it's a variety show yeah. for, for for families. It's slightly different there because the you know a uh, uh, Born Free and Merrick Park now it's a huge space. Yes. So um, it's a different kind of show to the more intimate lighthouse uh, pool pride mm. because obviously that's um, although people can get up and dance and join in if they wish. It, it, they can be more passive in a way. Not that they can't in Mary Park. You put a blanket down and sit yes. on the ground. But, you know, there's a lot more going on. There's a fun fair there and other. So they're very different events. Yeah. And um, I hope people will go to both because uh, I think there's something for families of both. There's a, something to, for each to complement the other, isn't there? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, yeah. Born Free has worked very closely with the uh, with the, 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 the uh, Paul Pride producers. And yeah. So there's always been a sort of constant dialogue. So They've been really generous with with their mm. time and sharing knowledge and experience, which which has been very very good, absolutely, um, yeah, yeah, very useful, and and ensured that they're very different. Yes, so, so that's good. Yeah, I'd say yes, exactly. Um, will you likely to be joining the party in the evening, or? Um, I hope if I'm, st- <laughs> if I'm still awake, <laughs> if I haven't been chased away by a dog, a dog. <laughs> so whose idea was this? Uh, was this dog show? I don't know. I <laughs> have no can't, can't, idea. That, not that, claiming authorship for that one. <laughs> I, I mean, it was so rap. Really, you know, it's like a dog show. Okay, um, so um, it's all new to me. I've never, I've never hosted a dog show. Um, I've been to them, yeah, and you know, I've, I've met a lot. A lot of my neighbours have dogs, and uh, and I love them all. So um, yeah, it's it feels like a dog show every day around where I live. <laughs> but, have, um, have you got yeah. to organise events and and tasks for the dogs to perform? Or? I hope not, because I wouldn't know what to do. So we'll be seeking advice. I once did Panto with um, Ashley, um, who found fame on, um, it must have been Britain's Got Talent, with Pudsey the dog. Oh. And sadly, uh, Pudsey passed away just before our pantomime. So she used her next dog, right. um, <laughs> who was lovely, Sully, but unfortunately wasn't quite ready for a <laughs> pantomime. And and it was only on a couple of shows that this dog did a runner <laughs> off the stage. And so um, Simon Webb from Blue and I used to improvise. <laughs> I'd, I'd go down a bit and do tricks. <laughs> and he tickled my tummy. Um, so, yeah, um, it was all very silly. But what was lovely about that, and, and she is amazing, Ash. I mean, she's such a talented performer. Mm. But, you know, what she d- does with those dogs, you know, through love and kindness and a lot of treats, <laughs> right. you know, what she achieves in that show, I mean, because I mean, she won it, I think, didn't yes. she? She won Britain's yeah. Got Talent. Yeah. Um, it is truly remarkable. But it's only when you're close up and you see what goes on behind the scenes that you really appreciate the, the hard, hard work yeah. and the yeah, talent yeah. that has gone into it. So anyone who can get their dogs to behave <laughs> deserves a medal. Incredible. But, um, uh, yeah, and not everybody succeeds. <laughs> but um, sometimes, you know, I think dogs are a bit like children, aren't they, really? Well, you can't they... predict what they're going to be like. You're the living embodiment that's the uh, disproves the rule about working with animals and children, then, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, we've we've had them all, um, you know, on, on children's TV. Mm. You know, we've handled all sorts of it. Ugh, chickens and... <laughs> Donkeys and, <laughs> and everything, anything that's real, even, even a few f- mythical creatures, you oh, know, God. but um, <laughs> unicorns and goodness knows wow. what. But yeah, no, it's good fun. Yeah, good absolutely, fun. absolutely. Yeah. So yes, it's uh, it'd be interesting to see the uh, the, the proud pooches um, at Lighthouse. Yes, on the yes. 8th of June. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know Lighthouse very well. You've been uh, you've been writing and appearing in pantos. What's it's six the last seven years. Yeah, it's been over, yeah, hasn't it? Um, quite yeah, a while, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so a, a place that uh, you've known for quite some time. Yeah, and a place I feel I've got to know probably better than I would have done um, had it not been for COVID because two of the pantos, one was right in the, yes. the horns of COVID mm. when we did Happy Ever After, yeah. and then the other one, uh, Beauty and the Beast, where COVID was still around and yeah. we had to be very, very careful. So you, you're working sort of more intensely with um, with those sort of um, restrictions and um, complications. You know, you're trying to deliver family entertainment at a time when they can't even be close and, yeah. you know, we can't be close. And you, so you're managing that. So, um, yeah, I felt that, you know, I got to know everyone a, a bit better than I would have done if it had just been a normal year of bringing in and wheeling in a panto. Obviously, now we're back there, you know, mm. we're back at a time where we can all be together 
together and you know we're still mindful of everything that can go wrong but we we weren't before um but yeah and 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 i think because of that but but also because of the the talent and the fact that it's a homemade panto this is not a panto too many pantos around the country are actually operated by companies that have dozens of shows and that's all great they enjoy economies of scale and you know the and the shared resources but ours is very homegrown from yeah. pool by pool for the people of pool and it has so much heart i mean every second of that show not just jokes about the one way system that mm. seem to be in every panto you go to you know there's, there's no laziness you know last year we had drone footage yes, as the um, yeah. as a, which was done by sam mm -hmm. who works in the crew um, who put so much time and care into that and then the video editing uh, james smith who's um, I don't know what he doesn't do apart from <laughs> appearing in it. You know, yeah. the lighting design, costume yeah. design, production design. He throws himself into it. And, and a pool boy himself, so, yeah. And he's from Paul, mm. went to Paul High, you know. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, it's all from the area. And, and as you know, Elspeth and Tim, who drive it, you know, are just there the whole time looking after everybody, which in itself is oh, hard. Absolutely. Well, know. it's funny, like, the, 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 the pandemic and the, and the lockdowns, they created a kind of bonding a place where people bonded and, 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 and grew closer because of it, even though we had to be at arm's length yes. physically. Um, and, and Lighthouse is somehow reaping the rewards of that now because this made in pool thing has become really really important yeah but i think you're right it did come from that you know and, and what you did what everybody did in every department you know front of house all the stewards everybody who, who gave their time you know it it created what we've now got mm. really it's a legacy from that period you know from having to do it ourselves to now always doing it ourselves even though actually we could go back to using to renting you know, a panto yeah. <laughs> rent a panto yeah. Yeah, it's a good name for a company. There's no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, I mean, in, in, perhaps in, in some ways, that that spirit that exists that we've that's now been nurtured and, and, and grown and developed over the last two or three years uh, is, is kind of what we bring to Pool Pride as well. It's um, We're not just importing a Pride event. We're actually creating something that's very pool very lighthouse but yes um, yeah but for the entire community so that's right because every area is different isn't it and i think that you know you, you you have a duty really if you if you want it to succeed to actually look at who's who the audience is and mm. and ensure that it works so yeah yeah much the same Absolutely. i agree yeah yeah and there's an there's an energy about the people involved in the production and the planning and uh, they're all sort of working towards the same the same point aren't they so. yeah and i think that comes out you know i mean i always find that with uh, shows um whether it's television or theater um if if everybody's on board and there's a warmth and a kindness that goes on um behind the scenes it all goes down the tube or out out through the pros arch of the <laughs> yes. theater you know everybody yeah. can i think I don't know about you, but when I go and see a show, I can always tell if the cars don't get on. <laughs> oh, if it's a happy company oh or not. Oh, my yeah, yeah, gosh. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. you can really tell. However funny or shiny and spectacular it is, you, yeah. know, you can always tell. There's something about the eyes, isn't it? Yes. Where do the eyes land? Is, it, is it eye to eye or eye to eye or eye <laughs> chin? You know, so <laughs> looking away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was always a problem, actually, in pantos in the past that... If the prince and the princess in real life, mm. if the actors get too friendly, <laughs> it can destroy a show. Ruin a company. <laughs> it can. It certainly ruins the show, you know. Wow. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's wow. totally, totally over. Oh, my. It's happened a few times. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. I just, uh, finally, we, uh, we have to talk about Sleeping Beauty this year's Panto. Very exciting. What can you tell us about it, Chris? Well, you know, once again, this year after, you know, the success of Aladdin um, and the amount of uh, work that went in to make that Aladdin about pool, you know, because we told a new Aladdin story where the lamp was hidden on the Jurassic Coast and, you know, we had so many references to pool or, or Dorset, yeah. really, um, but particularly pool. And I think that the challenge is to do the same this year and, you know, there's already conversations buzzing around about what we put into it it's it's almost a festival <laughs> yes. in itself you know it's it's a, well, a planning floats you know <laughs> panto frocks it's really much the same thing but um you know so there's a lot of enthusiasm um being um eluded at the moment you know as to what we can do and and, and what we can put into it and and from that we'll forge 
a show that um, hopefully is. It's got, we've got a great company yes. coming back. You know. Absolutely. I don't yeah. know whether they've signed yet. So I've never. <laughs> It'll all be there on the opening night. We'll see them yeah, then. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But no, it should be another great, a great, great panto. And um, yeah, I, th- I think as long as you've got, you know, a core team of people who are delivering it, you, you, your home and dry, it's when, it, you know, it's a one man show or, you know, it's a one woman show, mm-hmm. whatever, that it all falls apart. And, and, and for as long as we carry on as we are, you know, we're all together. I think it'd be good. So it's amazing to think we're we're, well, we're not even in the summer yet, are we? But there's already energy around the uh, the, the panto. Yeah, no, it's weird because it kind of starts before the you know the yeah. current pantomime has actually gone mm. on. So and it's the same at CBeebies with the Christmas show there because it's it's a very similar beast. You know, we go into a big theatre with that when we film it over four days and then edit it for the cinema and television, and um, you know it takes as long and we put the same sort of, well. Yeah, exactly the same energy into it. Lovely. Very similar thing. (laughs) Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Nick. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure as always. And I hope we've shone a a light of some sort on the difference that the the first Pool Pride can make. So don't forget all the daytime events are free, but you do need to book tickets. And if you want to find out more, check out the website lighthousepool.co.uk, which should be on your screen. And you can find us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and of course on YouTube. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to check out the other other episodes of Pridecast on the Lighthouse Pool YouTube channel. Thank you, Chris. Oh, you're brilliant. Thank you. I I hope that was all right. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Terrific. You there? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, did you want me to record it? I've I've had that before. Oh, no, no. (laughs) Are you all right, Ben? I was recording. (laughs) Well done, guys. Thank you.